Hi everyone, it's Bossy. Welcome to my channel V Birchwood. Today we're going to talk about the 10 essential tools that you'll need to make historical clothing. This is going to be the first part in a series of historical sewing for beginners. And this playlist is going to give you the basics so that you can feel confident throughout your historical sewing journey. Just for clarification, we're not going to be using a machine or anything like that for this playlist. It's going to be specifically for just hand sewing. It is incredibly important to invest in the basic tools that you'll need in order to begin with hand sewing because these are actually going to be your tools of your trade. In the long run, you're going to feel like it is so worth it to invest a little bit of money initially so that you can progress throughout your sewing journey. Now, I just wanna make a little bit of a disclaimer. I'm in no way an experienced dressmaker or seamstress, but my grandmother and mother are both very experienced seamstresses and they taught me how to sew when I was a kid. But the thing is they never taught me how to construct garments. So I began sewing my own historical garments about seven months ago, which means I'm definitely pretty new at this, just like maybe a lot of you are. The reason why I feel like I'm qualified to teach this historical sewing for beginners course is because everything that you've been going through or are about to go through, I went through very recently. This means that all of the challenges that you might face or are facing now are very fresh in my mind too, which means we all got to kind of go through this together. Most of all, I hope to be here for you as a resource, which means please send me a comment or a message if you're struggling in some way throughout your sewing process or if you're stuck on a specific part. I do my absolute best to answer every single comment, email, message I get and to be as helpful as I possibly can be to this community. Now the very first tool you're going to need, which is essential, is a good pair of fabric scissors. Fabric scissors are essential because you're not going to be cutting your cloth with paper scissors. It's really difficult to cut cloth with paper scissors. You can try it, but I don't recommend it. There are quite a few choices to choose from when you're picking fabric scissors, but the main thing that you want to do is choose one that is going to feel comfortable in your hand, but also heavy enough to provide a bit of a counterbalance. You can opt for more of a straight scissor, like this one. A tapered scissor is another good option. These just make it a little bit easier with the curve to be able to get across the fabric. And finally, if you want to get really fancy, you can use a rotary cutter, but you'll need to get a cutting mat to go along with this, so it's a little bit more expensive. And to be honest, I think normal shears do just a great job. The next thing you're going to want to invest in, which is a little bit more expensive than some of the other tools on this list, is an iron and an ironing board to go along with it. An iron is important to be used in order to press open seam allowances, to press fabrics in order to prep them for sewing, and also in general just to steam and neaten your garments after you've spent all of that hard work and time making them. You're going to want to choose an iron with a steam function because then you can get more use out of your one device and you don't have to buy a separate steamer. Next, you'll want to have a ruler and also a tape measure. You can probably get away with just having a tape measure if you're really strapped for cash, but being able to also have a ruler, which a lot of people have just laying around their homes, is important to be able to draw straight lines, to be able to connect different points on a graph, and when you start getting into maybe grading patterns, having a straight edge is really, really important to be able to measure everything, and also just to be able to mark your seam allowances. Silk pins or straight dress pins like these are another essential tool because they'll allow you to combine your two pieces of fabric together before you baste and then sew. If you're not familiar with what basting is, it's a quick running stitch that you'll do after your pinning process in order to hold your fabric together so that way when you're hand sewing you won't have to deal with poking yourself with these uncomfortable little pins every five minutes. On top of that too, you won't end up with blood dripping all over your white linen undergarments. The reason I suggest these smaller dress pins instead of the larger ones with the colorful dots on the top or plastic tops is because these are multi-use. You can use them to pin fragile materials like silk where you can see the dents in the fabric and you can also use them to pin other more forgiving materials like wool or cotton. This in the end ends up saving you money because you don't have to buy two sets of different pins which is a mistake that I made. I have two sets of different pins. Now obviously with hand sewing, needles are essential. How else are you going to hand sew? I personally use the John James embroidery needles. 
like this. And I typically use about a size five, but if my material is thicker, then I'll choose a needle that is more short and stout because it offers greater mobility when you're trying to get your needle through multiple layers of fabric. Now to go along with the needle, you're also going to need a thimble. A lot of people do not wear a thimble and I myself am often very guilty of this. I don't like wearing thimbles, but they do protect your fingers and it's important to be able to protect your digits because they're going to literally carry you through your entire sewing journey and your life for that matter too. So protect your fingers. I personally like to choose a leather one and that's because I find that it's just a lot more pleasant on my hands and I, because I have small fingers, I find that the metal ones are just a bit too loose all the time. It's hard to get the right size. So something like leather molds to your own skin and body and it just has a much nicer fit, like a glove. Along with your needles, you're also going to need thread. I recommend silk or linen thread because it's made of natural fibers and it's a lot stronger than cotton thread, which has a tendency to break and snap. I personally get my silk thread from a small local UK company called Mulberry Silks and the woman that runs it, she hand spins all of her silks. I genuinely feel that we vote every time with our wallets and I find it a lot more rewarding to support a small local business rather than a commercial company that doesn't really care about you or their product. With silk thread, it often comes in a couple of different widths. So I personally like to get the fine spun silk to sew and I get this thicker medium or I think it's even thick spun silk in order to do button holes because it saves you a lot of time. With linen thread, it needs to be conditioned in order to use it because unless you condition it, it'll have a hard time sliding through the fabric. Personally, I like to use beeswax and a lot of historical costumers do use beeswax to condition their linen thread. A useful trick is if you happen to have an old beeswax candle laying around like this one, you can actually use it to condition your thread. The next tool you'll want to have are these little embroidery scissors, even if you don't plan on doing embroidery. They're really useful for being able to snip little tiny threads or if you've messed up a seam, you can go in and just sort of cut them out. The next tool is one of my favorites. It's called Swedish tracing paper. Now, Swedish tracing paper is quite special because it looks a lot like tissue paper, except it's really strong. You see what I mean? It's not even tearing. And what this does is you'll be able to lay it on top of your pattern pieces and sketch them out so that way you don't have to actually cut into your paper. And then you can make the same pattern in different sizes or more than once without destroying your pattern that you bought or you had to spend all that time printing out and taping together. I choose this over regular tissue paper because it just doesn't tear if you mess it about and yet you can see everything perfectly through it. Finally, you're going to want marking tools to be able to either trace on your Swedish tracing paper or just directly onto your fabric. My go-to tracing tool is a medium softness pencil and that's because it's firm enough to make a distinct line but not too soft that it'll smear all over the place. Another good marking tool to have under your belt is Taylor's chalk. Now, I can only find my blue one, but usually it'll arrive in two different colors, so white and blue or yellow and blue. And this is so that for dark materials, you can use the white or the yellow one, and then for light materials, you can use blue. There are lots of other marking tools to choose from. Just go for whatever you think is best for your own needs. So those tools are the absolute essentials that you should have if you're going to undertake historical sewing. Now, these next tools are bonus ones. So that means if you have a little bit more money to spend, try and invest in these tools as well. So this is a tailor's ham and this is a tailor's sausage. They're completely vegan though. What these do is they allow you to better iron your seam allowances or to ease your sleeve cap when you're ironing it to make it easier to combine everything together at the end. They aren't essential if you're going to start with hand sewing, but the reality of it is they do help a lot. And so if you have the extra money to spend, why not just go for it and get one? Another bonus tool that you could get is called a French curve. French curves are especially useful for when you start with flat patterning or transferring patterns from a book to actual full-size grid paper. They just help to create all the curves and they're in the perfect proportion. So that way it just can be in one quick movement instead of having to determine how you can draw 
a perfect curve between two points. As you can see, they come in a few different sizes, so there's lots of versatility for whatever you're going to end up needing to do. So the next thing you might want to consider getting is a tracing wheel and carbon copy paper. Tracing wheels typically come in two different forms. One of them is just a basic tracing wheel, and the other one is this fancy double tracing wheel, which has the seam allowance line as well as the cut line, and you can mark both of them in one go and change your seam allowance right here with the meter. This technique is useful for when you want to either transfer your markings in between two layers of fabric, or if you want to mark the underside of a fabric layer and then flip it over and then do the other side. Carbon copy paper typically arrives in two colors. One will be white like this and then usually yellow. The only time that carbon copy paper really becomes difficult to use is if you're using it on white fabric because the yellow honestly doesn't show up very well. So you might have to use a different marking method like blue tailor's chalk in order to deal with white fabric. The final tool that you might want to get as a bonus is the seam ripper. The seam ripper is an absolute necessity, but it is actually a lot of fun and it does get the job done very quick. The reason why is because you can just run it through a big line of threads instead of having to hand unpick every single little round. So those were the 10 essential sewing tools for making historical clothing, plus a few bonus ones, let's be honest. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And the next video in this series is going to be the essential sewing stitches that you need when you make historical clothing. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the bell notification so that you'll get notified every time I post a new video. I typically post videos every other Thursday, but occasionally I'll get very excited and want to post one in just a week. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh wait, there's more! Because you can't use paper scissors to cl cut your cl cloth. These cars are driving me crazy. <laughs> it's so funny, I'm just gonna be like... Blood, sweat, and tears is taken to a whole nother level when it comes to hand sewing.